Sprint Cup drivers and teams are enjoying a much-needed and long-overdue weekend off. They will need it to get through the grueling 17-week schedule to finish the 2014 season. The second half of the season will feature 17 straight races from July to November, a stretch equivalent to the NFL regular season. With just two off weeks during the 38 race season the other is Easter weekend in April the 40 plus Sprint Cup drivers and teams will be running on empty come November. Less than two months later, they will head to Daytona to start preparing to do it all over again. 10 months of competition. 36 points races. 2 special events. 10 weeks of playoffs. Weeks of testing. And just 2 breaks. For competitors and fans alike, that's a bit much. The Sprint Cup schedule has been a hot topic all season. Six-time champion Jimmy Johnson advocates a shorter schedule. Brad Keselowski, the 2012 champ, says there should be fewer weekend events, with some races held during the week. NASCAR chairman Brian France says NASCAR is having serious discussions about the 2015 schedule but says that likely one to include fewer races. It should. A 38-race schedule with just two off weekends is overbearing for the teams and likely too much for fans as well. In the sports world that is already oversaturated with too many daily and weekly events and seasons that overlap, NASCAR often gets lost in the shuffle. It is the only sport that lasts the entire baseball season and must also contend with the NBA and NHL playoffs. The World Series, the NCAA Basketball Tournament, college football, the NFL and numerous other special events. In an age when attention spans are shrinking and the competition for TV ratings, ticket sales and general interest is more competitive than ever, NASCAR is too often playing second and third fiddle to other sports. The biggest challenges facing the sport today are how to quell declining attendance and how to boost stagnant TV ratings. The answer might be much simpler than better races, bigger personalities and a younger audience. The easy fix might be fewer races. It is a simple matter of supply and demand. Fewer races, strategically spread out over a shorter season, will make fans hungrier for racing action. That should lead to greater demand for tickets and more anticipation for the televised events. It also could lead to better racing and more exciting shows because the drivers and teams would be fresher and more anxious to race instead of worn out and lagging from the grind of the current week-to-week -week schedule one rife with rain delays and too much travel. NASCAR and the tracks like to promote each race as a big event. But big games and big events benefit from a break in the schedule, giving athletes time to rest and prepare and the marketing experts and the hype machines time to work their magic. Not in NASCAR, where competitors and support personnel can barely catch their breath before packing up and heading off to the next event. Fewer races, of course, means cutting events and perhaps dropping tracks from the schedule, a bold move NASCAR is reluctant to make. Fewer races and idle tracks means millions in lost revenue and NASCAR is always reluctant to hurt long-time partners that depend on it for survival. Fewer races also means less TV money and taking money out of anyone's pocket is always a tough sale. But a shorter schedule also would mean less costs, allowing teams to save money on everything from cars and crews to travel and food. And NASCAR already appears headed for a big fight with teams over costs and revenue. Making such a bold and dramatic move would be difficult and would not come without a great deal of angst and criticism. But NASCAR's great assets are the teams that field the cars, the drivers that drive them and the fans that pay good money and spend valuable time to watch them race. A shorter, more appealing schedule with more big events would enhance both assets and perhaps spike interest in a sport that desperately needs a shot of excitement and momentum right now.